Today we will be multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. So let's take a look at some of the problems that we'll end up seeing. First one here, 9 fifteenths times by 5 sevenths. So the first thing I'm going to do before I go ahead and multiply is I'm going to see if I can reduce the fraction at all. It's called cross-canceling. So I look for terms that are diagonal from one another or straight up and down, and I see if there's any common factors between these terms. So for instance, on this first one, I see that 5 goes into 15. So I can divide this 5 by 5, and that makes 1. So I cross this off, and I end up with 1 here. Here I'm going to divide this 15 by 5, and that gives me 3. Well, if I went ahead and multiplied across, I'd have 9 times 1, and then 3 times 7. But there's more that I can do to this because this is still not simplified. So sometimes I need to look up and down as well. So I didn't see that right away. So what I'll end up having to do is reduce it from this point. So again, I got the 21 by multiplying this 3 and the 7 right here. That's where I got 21. The 9 times the 1 made the 9. But again, I can reduce it further. So that's what I need to do. That's called simplifying. And so 9 divided by 3 makes 3. 21 divided by 3 makes 7. So 3 sevenths, that's the number that we're looking for. Taking a look at our next problem here, when I go ahead and look at all the reducing I can do, I see 14 and 7 have a common factor of 7. So I'm going to divide the 7 by 7, and I get 1. Divide 14 by 7, so again, I'm dividing by 7 there, and that's how I'm getting 2 cross this off just so we don't confuse it with the matter. Look at these 9's right here. The 9 goes into 9 one time. And so that means I can reduce those by dividing each of them by 9. So let's see what's left on top. So what I have is the 1 times the 1, and that's where I'm getting 1 from. Down below I have the 2 times this 1, and that's where I'm getting 2 from. So 1 half is the answer. Well, on this problem, we don't have a fraction here. I have 15, so I'm going to write 15 as a fraction, though. 15 over 1. And now I'm going to look for some cross-canceling. See, 15 and 6 have a common factor of 3. I can divide both of those by 3. So that's what I'm going to do here. Divide the 15 by 3, I get 5. I'm dividing the 6 by 3, and that gives me 2. So now I, know I can multiply across. So I'm multiplying the 5 by this 5, and that's where I'm getting 25 from. And then I multiply the 1 by this 2, and that's where I'm getting 2 from. So now I'm going to change it to a mixed number. So I'm going to divide 2 into 25. Well, it goes into 2 one time evenly. goes into 5 two times with 1 left over. So that makes 12 and 1 half. So 12 and 1 half is our answer. Well, the next one's a little bit more complicated because we've got a mixed number. Whenever you have a mixed number, you need to change this to an improper fraction. So the way we do it is we go 4 times 6 plus the 5, and that's all over 6. So that makes 24 and 5 make 29 6 times by 2 fifths. So now we go ahead and take out that common factor. So 6 and 2 can both be divided by 2. So 2 divided by 2 makes 1. 6 divided by 2 makes 3. So I go ahead and multiply across. I get 29 over 15. And I have that same situation again where I need to divide 5 into 29. It goes one time with 14 left over. Where did I get the 14 from? Well, all I did is sub subtracted 29 from 15, or 15 from 29. And when I do that subtraction, that's where I'm getting that 14 from. Well, let's take a look at our next problem. Here we just have two mixed numbers, so we change them to improper fractions. 1 times 5 is 5, plus 3 makes 8. So 8 fifths multiplied by 6 times 3 makes 18. 18 plus 2 makes 20, and that's all over 3. So again, we look for the cross-canceling. It makes the problem easier. 5 goes into 5 one time. 5 goes into 20 four times, so now we've made it smaller. So now we can go ahead and multiply across. 8 times 4 makes 32. 3 times 1 makes 3. So now we can divide. 3 into 32 goes 10 times. See, so 3 times 10 makes 30. And that makes with 2 left over. So I subtract the 
30 from 32, I've got 2 left over. So 10 and 2 thirds is the answer. Same sort of thing on the next one here. 2 times 5 makes 10 plus 2 makes 12. So 12 over 5. We're multiplying by 4 times 6 makes 24 plus 5. So I'm getting 24 plus the 5 all over 6 here. So that makes 29 6. So I look for the cross canceling. Again, we see it right here. 6 goes into 12 two times. 6 goes into 6 one time. We multiply across. We've got 58 over 5. Where do I get the 58? Well, these two numbers right here. 2 times 29 makes 58. Now I do the division. 5 into 58. Well, we see 5 goes into 5 one time with 0 left over. So we bring down the 8. 5 into 8 goes one time as well. Well, this time we have 3 left over, so it makes 11 and 3 fifths. Now, looking at the next one, it says Rolf spent 15 hours last week practicing his saxophone. If 3 tenths of, of is a key word, this tells us that we're going to end up multiplying. So let's watch what happens. 3 tenths of the time was spent on warm up routines. So 3 tenths of. 15 was spent on warm-up routines. How much time did he spend warming up? Well, he spent 15 hours practicing. Three-tenths of the time was, was uh, doing the warm-ups. So we'll just write down 15 times by three-tenths. And one way we can remember that of means multiply is that we'll just say 15 of three-tenths is, is means equals, now let's figure out what it does equal. So let's go ahead and write that 15 as a fraction, 15 over 1, and now we can go ahead and do the reducing. So let's take out the common factor of 5, so that makes 2 here, take out the 5 here, that makes 3. Multiply across, we've got 9 halves, 9 halves because 2 times 1 makes 2, 3 times the 3 makes the 9, so 9 over 2. So 5 of 3 tenths is 9 halves. But let's change that 9 halves to a mixed number. 2 goes into 9 how many times? 4 times. Makes 8, so with 1 left over, so 4 and a half. So 4 and a half hours was spent warming up during that week. Well, it says that a muffin recipe calls for 2 fifths tablespoons of vanilla extract for 6 muffins. Arthur is making 18 muffins. And so how many, how much vanilla extract does he need? Well, 18, we need to find out how many groups of 6 is in 18. So 6 is with 2 fifths. We need 2 fifths of the vanilla extract when we have 6 muffins. Well, if we have a 6 other muffins, we need another 2 fifths. And 6 more muffins would mean another 2 fifths. Well, 6 plus 6 plus 6 makes 18. So we could just add these numbers together and get our answer. And I'll go ahead and do that for you just to see what it is. 2 plus 2 plus 2 ends up giving me 6 fifths. And so that makes 1 and 1 fifth of that vanilla extract. And this is tablespoons. And so that's one way to come up with the answer. But let's use this multiplication to see if we can come up with another way. So another way we can end up doing it is dividing 18 by 6 divide those two numbers to find out how many groups of this two-fifths we need. We need three groups, three groups of two-fifths. And so from there we can multiply three groups times by two-fifths and we'll come up with the same answer. You see the reason is, notice that I put the three over one, I've got three groups of two-fifths. It's the same thing as adding two-fifths plus two-fifths plus two-fifths. So there's no cross-canceling that goes on, so that's how I'm getting that six-fifths, which again is the same thing as one and one-fifth. So that's how we're getting that answer. Well, those are types of problems that you're going to end up seeing on tonight's homework. Good luck.